Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in a series on the Psalms, ancient scripture songs that have powerful lessons for our lives today. We're glad you join us. Welcome. Our topic today, the Lord who hears and delivers. You say, Pastor Derek, I need that. Well, we're glad you're with us. Welcome to the team. Good to be together again. What a great series on these ancient scripture songs. And I'm excited today because one of our team members, Puya, you're going to be leading our study today. It's going to be a blessing. We also have some uh, remote team members joining us. Let's see. Glennie, good to see you with us. We're glad you're with us. Joining remotely, Tendi, always good to have you with us. And Leah, welcome back. We're glad you're with us today as we continue our study. We're always happy to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School members from around the world. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Here's a note from John in Namibia. Does anybody know where Namibia is? Yes, Kenneth, you know it's South your. Africa. Yeah, that's right. It used to be called German West Africa, right? Uh, it's south of your homeland, south of uh, Ghana, uh, Namibia. And John writes and says, I'm really delighted to see how well organized the Hope Sabbath School team is glorifying God on this program. I just started following Hope Sabbath School this year by scrolling through YouTube. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, by the time this broadcast airs, we will have more than 100,000 subscribers just on our English YouTube channel for Hope Sabbath School. Amen. That's awesome, wow. isn't it? Mm -hmm. One more platform. And John is one who found Hope Sabbath School. Thank you for writing to us. I know I'm not late because all of the studies are available on YouTube. <laughs> I thank God for these wonderful teachings because I am learning a lot, including the testimonies you share. Mm. Like testimonies from Travis, he said. Travis, can you give John a wave? He says that you're never too old <laughs> to be touched by someone who's listening. Amen. <laughs> I confess I'm one of those who's touched by your testimony. Amen. Amen. God. May God continue to bless you all. Thanks for writing to us, John, from the beautiful country of Namibia. Here's an interesting note from Duke. Duke lives in Pennsylvania. And Duke says, here's what I appreciate about Hope Sabbath School. And then he lists four things. The diversity of voices, mm. simplifications of sometimes complicated subject matter, a template that I could use in a local church, mm -hmm. and the warm and godly personalities of the team members. Amen? Amen. Amen? Well, someone's noticing. Duke, thanks for writing to us from Pennsylvania. Well, here's an amazing note from a couple in Florida. And the donor writes and says, My wife and I watch Hope Sabbath School every Sabbath. It's been a blessing, especially during the pandemic and after my heart surgery. Mm. You and your team members do a tremendous service to the Christian community worldwide. Amen. We would like to contribute to the efforts of Hope Sabbath School in order to assist with the mission of spreading the gospel. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you as a team and the fine work you're doing and, and a gift of $10,000 to bless the ministry of Hope Sabbath School. Yes, and Dilly used my favorite Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and thank you to you and each one of you. You know, we may have a person who sends $10 a month. And that's, a, that's part of the miracle, right? That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we can all be part of what God's doing to each one. Thank you. You can go to hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on that donate button and say, God, let the message of your love go to the whole world. One last note. This is an interesting note from Australia from a person whose name is Boom. Hmm. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting name. <laughs> My name is Bum. I'm writing from Melbourne, Australia. May God continue to bless your channel 
as I'm sure many lives are being touched around the world with Hope Sabbath School on YouTube. Now, the YouTube viewer. Well, I wrote to them, and I don't know how to say the name, but I said, that's a very interesting name. Where did you get that name? Would anyone like to know? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, his father worked in a ballistic missile program. Mm. And when he was born, he got named after ballistic missile. Mm. Wow. So that's, uh, that's wonderful to know that in Australia, and you'll have to send me a little voicemail to tell me how to say beam or however it's pronounced, that God gave you a name that would be a witness. Oh. Hmm. People would say, tell me about your name. Hmm. Well, it was about ballistic missiles, but now I've become a follower of Jesus. Amen. And he is the Lord who reigns over the whole universe. Amen. 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 And we're going to study today about a God who hears and delivers, Amen. even more powerful than any ballistic missile we can make. Hmm. Well, I just want to invite you to take advantage of a free gift we have for you before we sing our theme song. My wife has offered a collection of six trilogy scripture songs from the Psalms. If you want to write them down, Psalm 9, 27, 42, 105, 134, and 139, but you don't have to remember. Just go to hopetv.org slash hopess, click on the free gift button, and get a collection of scripture songs, including our theme song, Psalm 105, that you can hide in your heart. The Spirit will guide you on your journey through life. Right now, we need your help. Let's sing our theme song together. And I'm looking forward, Puya, to our study. You can call upon the name of the Lord as we begin our study today. Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, as we just sang that beautiful praise song from Psalm, we give thanks to you for this opportunity to study your word and get to know more about you. And we call upon your name. Amen. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us and to help us understand your word. We pray not only for our team members here in the studio and our remote members joining us here live as we are recording this, but Lord, we pray for all the Hope Sabbath School members from around the world. Amen. Wherever it is that they are watching this from, Lord, whenever it is and whatever venue they're watching this through or platform, we pray that you will be with each and every single person studying the Bible with us today. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So we are continuing our study on the Psalms, and we are now on lesson number four. And the title of our lesson today is The Lord Hears and Delivers. Amen. And for our viewers from home, I want to invite you to go grab your Bibles because we're going to be looking at many verses. If, if you have joined us for the past few episodes that we have studied on Psalms, you will see that we read so many texts. So I want to invite you to uh, open the Bible with us, 
turn to the verses as we read them and make the Bible come alive. May the Holy Spirit speak to you as well. Amen. So, as we look at our next part of our study on the Psalms, I want us to turn to Psalm 139. That's where we will be beginning. Travis, if you can start our lesson by reading Psalm 139, verse 1 to 6. And let's see the attribute of this, uh, this Creator. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from this portion of Psalm 139, what attribute of this Creator God do we see? Anyone? Yes, go ahead. It's a personal God. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, He knows your inside. You have, he has seen everything when you sit, when you rise, when you go to sleep, your thoughts, your familiar with everything, even before a word comes out of your mouth, he already knows what you're going to say. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. There's a theological term that describes this that is called omniscience. Mm -hmm. God knows everything. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at the next part of the same chapter. Stephanie, if you can kindly read for us verse 7 to 12 of the same Psalm 139, please. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light unto about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Mm. Mm. Thank you for reading that. So from verse 1 to 6, we have seen that God knows everything. Mm -hmm. And from verse 7 to 12 that Stephanie just read, what attribute of God can we see here? Omnipresence. Omnipresence. What does that mean, Stephanie? Everywhere. You, he's, he can see everywhere. He's, he is everywhere. I he say. is everywhere. So we have a, a picture of a God who knows everything and who is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Before we continue reading Psalm 139, I just want to ask this question. Just from those two attributes of God, let's say a person have never uh, read this chapter and have never heard of this picture of a Creator God and based on just those two information, somebody who knows everything and who is everywhere, is it good news or bad news? <laughs> As Gladys pointed out the word personal. Is, that, is it good that He knows everything and He's everywhere? Scott, I see your hand. You know, that really depends on ah. what kind of God we have. <laughs> if, if we have a, a capricious or a vengeful God, Tired. then that's really bad news. Mm. But if we take the rest of the scripture and we see that God is good and loving, then that's amazingly good news. <laughs> exactly. Amen. So the answer is, it depends on the character of this God, right, Travis? Right. Um, the fact that God knows everything has been one of the greatest revelations to me ever, because um, if, if I could hide things from God, surely I would have a closet full of things I would hide. But the fact that He does know everything means I have to be okay with laying it out on the table. And then the fact that He loves me in spite yep. of knowing everything about me, I think one of the greatest revelations to me was that God knew everything and He still likes me. He loves me. <laughs> That's right. And so for me, it's good news. We're coming to that point. Uh, I see Glennie. Mm -hmm. So I was about to go in line with what was said in terms of um, it, it's we're fortunate that God is a good God, but it 
it can also be a good or bad thing for us. It depends for us too. If we're if we don't want to be seen by God, then that's bad news for us. But if we're looking for God, it's great news. Mm, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. I believe this is crucial because you know we we may grow up in the church or we may have heard about the goodness of God, but when we say God exists, that doesn't mean you know, a good news right away for everybody because mm -hmm. people may have a very wrong picture of God in their head. So when you hear the word God, you know, they could be thinking of like a very angry, tyrant, mm -hmm. controlling figure, picture of God. But let's see the rest of uh, Psalm 139 from verse 13 to 18. And Zandile, if you can kindly read for us that section from verse 13 to 18. Let's see what additional character can we see of God here? So, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Verse 13 says, For you formed my inward part. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame is not hidden from you. When I was made in secret, and skillful wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, mm -hmm. and in your book they were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I shall count them, they will be more in number than the sand. Mm. When I awake, I am still with you. Mm. Wow, mm. thank you for reading that. How precious are the thoughts of God towards us. Mm. 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 How precious mm. that if you were to count the goodness of God, there would be more than sand. Mm. Mm. That's a beautiful description of the character of God, mm. right? Mm. As somebody pointed out earlier, this God, the Creator, he knows us. He knows everything about us. And He's everywhere. And He loves us fully. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's no better news than that. Right? <laughs> There's a pastor by the name of Tim Keller who wrote uh, this little quote that I really loved. Uh, he said, To be loved but not known is comforting, but it's superficial. Mm -hmm. To be known and not loved is our greatest fear. Mm -hmm. But to be fully known and truly loved is, well, a lot like being loved by God. <laughs> Somebody may love us on the superficial level if they don't know us deep down. Mm. And we're afraid sometimes that people might find out our true character deep inside if we have secrets. Mm -hmm. And yet this Creator God, He knows everything about what you have done, your past, your present, and yet He fully and truly loves you. Praise God. I believe that's the beginning point of all emotional and spiritual healing. Amen. To know that this Creator, He delivers us, He hears us. Scott, I see your hand. You know, it makes me think of um, a marriage relationship. Um, mm. Because I know that my wife loves me, mm. I can be comfortable being myself with her. Mm. And I know that even if even if I make a mistake or something, it's not like she's going to divorce me tomorrow, right? Because, mm -hmm. because I'm confident in her love. And it's the same way with God. If, if I have that understanding of who God is, I don't have to pretend to be good for God, right? Mm -hmm. I, and it's, it's, it's hopeless anyway, because God knows, but sometimes we still, we want to pretend. And, but if I really understand that, it's freeing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, beautiful. Thank you for that, that, that example. And I think yes. that's the greatest motivation to want to live for God. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. He loves us unconditionally. That doesn't lead us to say, well, I'm going to keep hurting Him and grieving Him mm -hmm. because He loves me unconditionally. I think love is what transforms our hearts. Mm -hmm. And that happens in a limited way in a marriage relationship, though we're imperfect. Mm -hmm. But with the love of God, the love of God transforms us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Would anyone want to share from the scripture, from the Bible, any stories or any event where this Creator God drawing near to this world? Yes, Kailinda. Well, I'm thinking about the beginning of the Gospels. So in Matthew 1, an angel comes and he speaks to Joseph, who will raise Jesus. Hmm. And Jesus is described with two words. One, Jesus. 
the person who will come to save people from their sins. Mm. This is fulfilling the prophecy where the child will be called Emmanuel, mm. which means God with us. Amen. That's literally this Creator God becoming yes. a part of our human family, drawing near, mm -hmm. drawing near to us. Yes, Zandile. Uh, I love this part. I was thinking about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in John chapter 4, Jesus needed to go through. Mm. <laughs> he intentionally <laughs> needed to go through that so that he would draw uh, mm. a sinner to himself. Amen. Amen. Stephanie. I'm thinking of the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, the, you know, before it was the Son of God who came and um, before he became Jesus. Mm. Um, and that God, the Son of God was there in person, wow. showed up in person. He draw it near. Yeah. Some may not know, uh, Puya, that that's in the book of Daniel, chapter mm -hmm. 3, mm -hmm. with Shadrach, Meshach, that's and Abednego. Right. But right. I think that's really a good point, that he doesn't just theoretically <laughs> draw near. That's right. <laughs> Both with that and with the incarnation, he actually mm. draws near to us. Mm. Amen. Amen. I want to go to our remote team member, Glennie, if you would share with us your comment here, please. Um, I'm also reminded of Elijah, the prophet Elijah, who was fleeing from a death threat from yeah. Queen Jezebel and was in this moment of depression to the extent he was like, I just want to die. That the, the irony, right? Um, but you see God coming in the form of a wind. I mean, he, mm -hmm. God, there was a wind, there was an earthquake and a fire, but God was not in that, but he was in the still small voice. So. Mm. See God drawing near mm. to the brokenhearted. Yes, mm. Amen. beautiful, Amen. beautiful, Gl Gladys. I love in the, in Genesis when when uh, Abraham sees the and receives the visitors, mm. and I love the part where when God tells him, "Would God do anything without revealing to mm. to His servant?" So He's mm. talking to Abraham like, "Hey, I, I'm not going to do anything without consulting with you." Right. So it's like so close, so personal because right. He is God; He can do whatever He wants. Yet He chose to come and share with Abraham His plan. Amen. He communicates with us. Yes. Right. Mm. Now imagine if God did communicate with us. We would never have any idea about who He is. Yeah. Let's continue our study on uh, uh, the next part of our study, which will focus on this character of God, on His care for us. And I want to request Leah from our remote team, if you can kindly read for us Psalm 40, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 40, verse 1 to 3. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And it reads, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a sound of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for reading that. I want us to go to another text, Psalm 121, along the same line of God's care for us. And Kenneth, if you can read for us Psalm 121, I want to ask the question, what encouragements can we find from these texts, especially when it comes to his character of caring for us? And I will be reading from the New King James Version, and it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He will keep you. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. Mm. The Lord is your shade. At your right hand, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Amen. 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 <laughs> what encouragement can we find from these texts? Any, any specific verse mm -hmm. uh, jump out for you from these uh, texts that we read? Yes, Scott. I was really struck by um, the expression, the Lord is your keeper. Mm. I was thinking of a lot of things that get, get um, kept. I was thinking of 
depending on your country, you call it, might call it soccer or football. There's a keeper, a goalkeeper, right? right? Whose job is to protect that goal. But of course, as a human keeper, that person is not perfect and, and you, know, you can do it. But imagine, imagine if God were the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, would the, what would the final score be of the game, mm -hmm. right? And, but God's our keeper, God's our protector. He, he, mm -hmm. you know, he takes care of us and that, that's amazing mm -hmm. news. All right, the word keeper, Zandeli. Uh, Psalm 40 uh, did it for me. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Mm. Mm. Though the wait might seem long, he waited patiently. Mm. But the end of, the, uh, of verse 3 says, many will see it in fear and I will trust in the Lord. We are not waiting in vain. Mm. Yes. Mm. Even though we might wait for a pretty long time right. to us, but it's not a long time to God and it is not in vain. Thank you mm. for sharing yeah. that. Mm. Some, someone watching Hope Sabbath School today might be in that moment of waiting for an answer. Mm. Mm. And thank you for reminding us that we don't wait in vain when we wait on God. Mm. Amen. That's a powerful lesson. Now, someone, someone may be going through challenging time and questioning whether God really cares about us individually, mm. right? How can we help people in those circumstances of uh, challenging times in life and to, to come to the point of trusting that God truly cares mm -hmm. about us. Anyone? Yes, Kenneth. Um, there's this text in the Bible which says that he's a man of sorrow, acquainted with our grief. Mm. Mm. You know, when I was reading Psalm 121, which says that I'll lift up my eyes to the hill. When you look at the hill, Sometimes it can be very challenging. It looks so blank, mm. Mm. but it says that my help comes from God. So even just by looking, God is able to hear the cries of the soul and reach out and help us. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you are, even if it looks like a hill, a mountain in front of you, God will still be able to come through mm. for you. Mm. Amen. I, I, I see Lee and Tendi's hands waving, but All let right. me just say, I think that the context of looking to the hills mm. uh, in the topography of Israel was looking up toward Mount Zion, mm. Mm. to where God's presence had filled the temple with glory right. mm. in, in the time of Solomon. So it was mm. his way of saying, not just geography, mm. Mm. but I lift up my eyes to God, right. to the Lord. That's where my help comes from. Mm. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Let, let's go to our remote team to Tendi and then Leah. Mm -hmm. So um, I was struck by Psalm 40. Uh, most of the time when people feel unloved or uncared for is because they're not listened to, they're not heard. But we have this God who inclines, who hears the cries and um, re removes us from the miry clay, establishes Amen. our feet, Amen. enough to put a new song in our mouth. He, he takes the time to listen mm. and hear and establish us and takes out of the time of trouble or wherever we are. Mm. So that for me denotes a God who cares for you. Amen. 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 Mm. Thank, thank you for sharing us that, uh, that point. That I think earlier in our lesson, somebody pointed out that you can just come to God, cry out to Him, mm -hmm. like bring your problems, even if you are not happy with the, the way things are. And let's say, might I use the word angry at God? Instead of running away from God, run to come him. to Him, yeah. run to Him with your anger, with your questions, yeah. come yes. to God. Mm -hmm. um, Leah. And then I'll come to Gladys. Mm -hmm. You had asked, um, how can we make people believe that God truly cares about them, especially as an individual? Um, and I think the only way we can do that is to practically be the hands and feet. That's what Jesus asks us to do. Wow. So how can anyone believe that God is a caring God unless we who believe in Him care for them first? That's wow, mm -hmm. wow. That's, that's, that's a practical wow. application. Yep. Thank you for sharing. Gladys. Well, I think that the key is knowing who God is and experiencing Him because mm. like we all know Job mm. and all the trials that he went through. Mm. And yet he was able to say, if I had not remember who God is, mm. I will have lost faith. I will have lost mm. heart, mm. but I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the Amen. Amen. So when you know who God is, when you have experience, 
Mm. his goodness in your life, mm. then even when you're going through the tough situations, you can still trust. Mm. You can still know that he cares, that mm. he hears you when you cry. Amen. Thank you for sharing us. All right, let's move on to the next part of our study where we'll look at a few image imageries that describe that describe the the protection of God as he cares about us. Let's go to Psalm 17, verse 6 to 8. And uh, Nicole, if you can kindly read for us Psalm 17, verse 6 to 8. I want us to pay attention to the image or the picture that God is depicted as here. And the New International Version says, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love and who save, sorry, you, you who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Mm. <laughs> Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Let's look at another text along the similar line, Psalm 57, verse 1. And Stephanie, can you kindly read for us Psalm 57, verse 1? And for the sake of time, I'm going to ask Kenneth to read for us Matthew 23, 37, after Stephanie reads Psalm 57, Matthew 23, 37 for Kenneth. But first, let's go to Stephanie, Psalm 57, verse 1. And the New King James Version says, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. All right, we see again the shadow of the wings. Kenneth, can you read for us Matthew 23, 37, please? Mm -hmm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version and it reads, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophet and stone those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you children together as a hand gathers her cheeks under her wings, but you were not willing. Mm. Mm. All right. So what, what, what is the meaning of this image, uh, the shadow of his wing? Mm. What picture or what lesson can we learn from this mm. depiction? Kenneth? There is protection mm. under the coming to God, coming mm. and hiding under the shadow of God. Mm. There is protection, there is safety. Mm. There is love, there's everything we need. Mm. But outside of it, we are left to mm. the attacks of the enemy. Mm. I see a few hands here. Let me first go to Nicole and then Gladys and Travis. You know, as Kevin speak, I, I realize it, it brings to mind security, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which we don't have in this world. This yeah. world is full of such destruction and everything else. But in the shadow of God's wings, we have security and there's yeah. nothing better than having some security somewhere. Mm -hmm. wow. Isn't that true, especially today? If mm -hmm. you look around the world, mm -hmm. to the east, the west, the south, the north. Turmoil. There are turmoils <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. People need that security. Mm -hmm. Gladys. Yeah, I don't know if you have ever seen chicks when they are born, they're tiny. Mm. Whenever there is a noise they don't recognize, so yeah. lightning, they just run under the mother's wing and they just hide. Right. So uh, that's the image that comes to me when, when God is trying to say, under the wings of the Almighty. Mm. It's like Kenneth was saying, protection, security, that source that you know that you can run to and mm. be safe. Mm. Thank you, mm. Travis. I was just thinking of an object lesson. Um, um, we have to take it in context, but I know that we have animals at home, pets, and we have hawks and eagles that try to get them. <laughs> and when they see the shadow of their wings flying, they just scatter. And I'm thinking that's how evil is. You know, mm -hmm. when when <laughs> God spreads his wings out, evil is just, <laughs> yeah. they just fear, you know, um, Satan fears God um, mm -hmm. and his authority. Hmm. And um, so, yeah, it's just this is what I was thinking about. Like, I would run to under his wings because yeah. evil will flee at, at um, even the thought of being close. Amen. Amen. Pastor. You know, I, I thought when Gladys shared about the chick, and some of you heard the story about the fire in the farmyard where the mother hen, mm. they found this hen charred, mm. died. Mm. But when they moved it, the little chicks came running out mm -hmm. that the mother had given her life. Mm. And it just hit me, maybe with new meaning, 
where, where Jesus said, I'm, I'm willing to mm -hmm. cover you. Mm. Yes. And we, need, we know he would do that even at the cost of his own life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to, to save you. That's yeah. right. Yes. Um, maybe, maybe that's more than should be there, but it uses the image mm -hmm. of covering you. It's yeah. not just, well, I'll cover you for a little while. It's, I love you even unto death yeah. mm -hmm. so that you can be saved. And, you know, that just, that's a beautiful picture of a loving God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Let's, let's look at some other um, picture of God as our uh, protector. Let's go to Psalm 31, verse 1 to 3. Scott, uh, can you read for us Psalm 31, verse 1 to 3, while we're looking that up, Zendeli, uh, can you go to Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2, and we'll, we'll read that right after Scott reads Psalm 31, verse 1 to 3. All right, and I'm reading from the New King James. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Amen. Amen. Mm. All right. What word stands out for you when it comes to protection? <laughs> mm, refuge. Refuge. Rock. For rock. rock. Fortress. 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 <laughs> what picture comes to your mind when you hear the word fortress? Strive. 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 War. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? The enemies are coming Attacking. to attack yeah. the city. You need a good mm -hmm. fortress to be protected, mm -hmm. right? All right, so we have that picture. Now let's go to Zendeli, uh, Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. Let's see another word that could help us understand more about God's protection for us. So, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Wow. <laughs> what kind of peace is that? Yeah. You know, in my margin, uh, Puya, instead of very present help, it says, abundantly available help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. It reminds me of uh, if anyone likes wisdom, ask, and he gives liberally and without reproach, mm -hmm. abundantly available. It's like God is just waiting mm -hmm. to be our help and our deliverer mm -hmm. when we ask him. Amen. 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 So we have seen a few description of God's protection for us uh, in the words of uh, shadow of his wings. We've seen that. We have seen God as our rock, our fortress, our refuge, present help. Let's go to Psalm 91 and try to see another picture or maybe more than one here. Psalm 91 is a good chapter. Psalm 91, let's read from verse 2 to 7. And I'm going to ask Gladys if you can kindly read that for us. Psalm 91, verse 2 to 7. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Psalms 91, verses 2 to 7. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Hmm. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Oh, hmm. wow. Thank you for reading that. What words jumped out for you <laughs> from <laughs> Psalm 91 there? We have seen the word refuge, fortress. fortress. It's repeating here again. Wings. Mm -hmm. Wings. Any other weapon of protection Feathers. there? Oh, okay. Shield. <laughs> Shield. Shield. <laughs> yes. Shield. Buckler, right? Mm -hmm. Protection from God. It's a beautiful description. I really love, love verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and mm -hmm. ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. description of God's protection for us. I want to give some time for somebody here in the team, maybe from our remote teams as well, team members as well, of a time where you called out to God to be your refuge. Mm -hmm. Any experience that 
you have uh, gone through, where God became that shelter for you mm. from the challenges that you went through uh, in life. Kailinda, were you? Mm -hmm. I was thinking um, it, in reflection to what Leah was saying, that mm. God has used people to be shelters for me. Mm. Whenever I've been going through a difficult circumstance um, and I feel alone and like many times in the Psalms, you're just very upset. You can't seem to feel that there, mm. you know, is a future, even though rationally, you know, God is there. God brings people into your life that provide a refuge where you can say, hey, I need help or I need encouragement. Mm. Mm -hmm. Man, that's, that's a beautiful reminder, an important one mm -hmm. for us also to be the hands and feet of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. To be the ones that provides that shelter for people who need one. Travis and then Derek. Mm -hmm. For me lately, um, this has been um, a, a real um, experience for me, making God my refuge. Uh, mm. Just getting involved, you know, sometimes we find ourselves, and I have found myself lately, getting more involved in work and less involved in ministry. Well, maybe not lately, but maybe a couple months ago. And God just brought that to my attention. It's like, you, I have work for you to do. Mm. Well, then you start, we work for God and we get involved and the enemy likes to attack. Mm. And one of the things that um, I just really relied on God as my refuge um, and remembered that he knows the beginning from the end. Mm. I faced many challenges and decisions um, with things that I would be doing. And I'm thinking, God, I don't know the beginning from the end. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know what choice to make, whether it be my work or whether it be ministry. I don't know what it is, mm. but I know you know. Mm. And so I'm just giving it to you and I'm just gonna put my faith in you and make you my trust mm. because then whatever comes out of this, I can trust that it's the right thing. And uh, so lately I've found comfort in making God my refuge just because there's many challenges in life that I just don't know what the outcome will be, but God knows. Mm. Amen. 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 Derek. So I'm sitting here, Puy, and I'm thinking there's probably thousands of Hope Sabbath School members mm. who could give a testimony. Mm. And maybe we should ask them to write to sshope at hopetv.org and mm -hmm. just say, we want to hear from you because if we haven't experienced it yet, Mm -hmm. We will, right? Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because we live in a world that's uh, involved in a cosmic battle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so uh, w we will need to know not just theoretically, mm -hmm. but personally, mm -hmm. that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Oh, there's so much to unpack here, but we need to move on <laughs> where God is described not only as our refuge, but our deliverer, mm -hmm. right? I want to ask Glennie uh, to read for us Psalm 50, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And let's see the picture of God from this text. So I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says... Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Mm, mm. Thank you. Call upon me in the day of trouble. 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 And I will deliver, deliver you. you. And you will glorify me. Yes, Amen. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Yeah. There's that promise that God will deliver us. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there's a question that we have to ask. Does God always deliver us from our present circumstance? But before we come to that, uh, let's first go to Psalm 114, mm -hmm. Psalm 114, verse 1 to 8. And I want to ask Nicole, if you can read for us Psalm 114, 114, verse 1 to 8. And let's see some of the examples of God's uh, miracles, act of deliverance for His children. Mm -hmm. The New International Version of Psalm 114, 1 through 8 says, When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob from a people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. Hmm. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains leaped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it sea that you fled? Why Jordan did you turn back? Why mountains did you leap like rams, you hills like lambs? Tremble earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, 
who turn the rock into a pool, the hard rock into springs of water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You see, thank you for reading that. We, we saw the description of the sea mm-hmm. fleeing. Yeah. Jordan, the river Jordan turning backwards. <laughs> Those are miracles. Yeah. Uh, mountains skipping like rams, mm-hmm. hills like little lambs. <laughs> That's a powerful description of God delivering His children. Of course, if we if we go to the story from Exodus, we will see those miracles, right? God mm-hmm. literally uh, delivering his children as he led them through the Red Sea, parting the waters, providing them the, the shadow or the, uh, the pillar of cloud by day mm-hmm. and a fire by night to warm them. Mm-hmm. God was with them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I want us to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, where Paul talks about this, these stories and pointed us to the person of the Godhead who was the deliverer here. And Travis, can you kindly read for us uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Amen. So who was this God who had been delivering them and providing them all throughout their journey? Hmm. Scott. You know, Christ is that deliverer. You asked earlier the question, does mm-hmm. God always deliver us? And mm-hmm. I know there are people who are experiencing things in their lives and sometimes say, why doesn't God deliver me? You know, I, mm-hmm. you know where, where is that promise that, you know, and the reality is, yes, God is absolutely our deliverer, but we don't get to dictate the terms of his deliverance. Mm-hmm. God has his own ways of doing things that we may not understand, mm-hmm. but he is still working. Mm-hmm. And 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 whatever his plan may be if we were if we knew it we would agree with it mm. Mm. Uh, to pick to pick up on that point are there any exam- any examples from the bible where you know the faithful servants of god went through trials mm-hmm. and were not delivered uh, kailinda and then gladys this summer, I went to uh, the Middle East for the first time, and I visited the fortress where John the Baptist was oh. um, murdered. Mm. And it's in the middle of, of nowhere. He had been taken far out from the main city. And I just wondered as he was being taken away, whether initially he was like, it's okay, because I know my cousin's going to come rescue me in just a couple <laughs> days. He'll be king soon. And then he had to sit mm. in, a, in a dungeon, in a, a large pit. Mm. Um, your present isn't your purpose, and mm-hmm. your situation is not indicative of God's love for you. Mm. Mm. That's right. Mm. Thank you for sharing. That's yes, powerful. Derek. I, I want to respectfully challenge the words, mm. people who weren't delivered. I believe that John the Baptist was mm-hmm. delivered. Yeah, well, Amen. Yes, that's right. And so was Stephen. Yeah. Mm. Yes. That's they right. were right. delivered from the mm-hmm. lie mm-hmm. that their death meant nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Because mm-hmm. even in his death, Stephen yeah. was an instrument for the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. That's mm-hmm. right. And Jesus says, no greater prophet has been born of women than John, John the Baptist. Baptist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I love in that book, Desire of Ages, where Ellen White says that for the encouragement of thousands mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who in later years would give their lives mm-hmm. martyrs, mm-hmm. Uh, John the Baptist faced that crisis. So he was delivered mm-hmm. from the lie that God had abandoned him. Mm. He was delivered from the lie that his death meant nothing. Mm. He was faithful to death with the promises, Revelation says that you will receive a crown of life. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think what we really need, what I need, is to see beyond my present circumstance, Mm -hmm. Mm. see beyond the lies of the enemy, and say, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will. Mm. Yeah, and you right. will glorify me. Yeah. And I imagine when Stephen is raised from the dead, 
Mm-hmm. And he, he sees that Saul became one of the wow. greatest Christian apostles. Ooh, right. He may even use my favorite Hebrew word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But he will say, the Lord did deliver me. Yeah. Right. But he also delivered other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Through, through the trial I went through. So mm. uh, I, 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 I know what we're saying, you know, when we say, well, he didn't. But I would say short term, maybe it didn't look like it. Mm. Mm-hmm. But he will be faithful to his promise and mm. he will deliver all of his children. Amen. 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 Yeah. Gladys. Yeah, I, I, my story was the story of Stephen, but since mm. you touched on that, I also wanted to say that it, it, sometimes we just put God in a box and it wants us, we want him to answer a particular way mm. Mm. that if I'm sick, I want healing. Mm. Mm. But sometimes the deliverance that we need, the healing that we need is not physical. Mm. There are other areas of our life that God is trying to work through the circumstances that you're going through. Either it's your believing God, your dependence on God, really understanding who God is. Mm. And through the testimony, like Alinda was saying earlier, other people can come to the knowledge of God. Amen. 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 Mm. He always delivers us. I think that's the lesson here. The deliverance may be uh, from the lies Mm -hmm. of the the, the deception of the enemy. It may be a physical deliverance, but no matter what, I believe the lesson here is hold on. Right. We have to move on. (laughs) There's so much to unpack here. I wish we have uh, two, three hours to continue, (laughs) but then that still won't be enough. I'm, I want to ask Leah from our remote team, if you can kindly read for us Psalm 20, verse 1 and 2. And I want to ask the question uh, of how does the psalmist frame the source of this help? Psalm 20, verses 1 and 2 in the English Standard Version reads, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. Mm, thank you. From where? From Zion. Sanctuary, sanctuary. sanctuary. sanctuary from Zion. Yeah. Sanctuary. Why does the psalmist describe the source of the deliverance or the source of the help from God as the sanctuary? Uh, Travis and then Stephanie. The, God, the sanctuary was God's plan, visual plan of salvation. Yes. And, ah. that, and that was also... Um, it, it was a blueprint of the sanctuary in heaven where Jesus would minister as our high priest on our behalf. Mm, thank you. Stephanie, that was, you want to add anything? That, no, <laughs> that was good. That's where yes. I was headed. All right, let's go to Kenneth. Then. And also he says he lives to ever intercede. Mm. That is where we know Jesus is. Mm. So when he's interceding, right. he sends his spirit mm. to come to our aid to help us. Mm-hmm. Can you read for us that, that, uh, that text from Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, about the heavenly sanctuary and how Jesus is serving there as our high priest. But it's interesting to note that from, from the stories of uh, Exodus, and uh, the book of Exodus, when God first asked Moses to build the sanctuary, the, the word that God used was, let them build a sanctuary so that I may dwell, dwell among them, right? So mm-hmm. the sanctuary is the presence of God. Yeah. Uh, but let's, let's look at the New Testament now, Kenneth, because today we don't have the physical sanctuary on earth. Yeah. Uh, but where can we find that hope, Kenneth? I'll be reading from Hebrews 8, verse 1 to 2. The New King James Version read, Now this is the main point of the thing we are saying. Mm. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, Mm. a minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. Mm. Mm. (laughs) All right. What, what, What hope do we have from this text that Jesus is our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. Mm. Anyone? Scott. Who can ask for a better priest? Mm. Who can ask for a better mediator? Mm. You know, um, maybe maybe if I chose a human lawyer to represent me, I don't know how good that lawyer would do, but the king of the universe? Mm. (laughs) Who can ask for better? Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Stephanie. Well, I'm thinking um, chapter 4 of Hebrews 15 oh, and 16. Beautiful. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you don't you read mind. for us that, yes. please. Mm-hmm. The New King James Version says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, mm-hmm. but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. 
Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I love the word boldly. <laughs> yes. We can approach Bold. the throne of God boldly yeah. through Jesus, yes. Amen. our high priest. Amen. Amen. What a comfort that is to know that the Creator God, the Creator of the universe, we're not talking about the king of one country, we're talking about the king of mm. the universe. Praise Him. Amen. And we can approach His throne with boldness. Amen. Travis, one last comment. Well, I know one of the ways that we can learn to trust God with boldness is to get involved in His work. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Because there's nothing more than He wants than to have people saved. And mm. so when we get involved with His work, we will see God work miracles. Mm. And that has been a huge blessing for me. So I'm, if there's if viewers out there watching, get involved and you <laughs> will see miracles and you will learn to trust God. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to appeal to you, our Hope Sabbath School viewers from around the world, wherever it is that you may be watching today, I want to appeal to you that God is close to you. Mm -hmm. He's drawing near to you. You may feel like you have been too far away. You have fled from the presence of God. Maybe you have done things that you are not proud of, mm -hmm. but God still loves you. Amen. He's still pursuing you. He's calling you home. Come back. <laughs> He's everywhere. His love is never ending. Amen. <laughs> He loves us. He cares about us. He draws us near. And we have learned from today that God is our refuge, our shelter, our shield, uh, under the shadow of His wings. Beautiful description of His character for us. So I want to invite you to make that a reality for yourself mm. by coming to the throne of God with boldness through Jesus Christ, Amen. our High Priest. Yes. So our lesson today, the Lord hears and delivers. May that be a blessing for all of us today. Amen. 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 Yes, and more than just knowing that, as Puya mentioned, to accept, to receive that, that He is the Lord who hears and delivers you, delivers me. Mm. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for these ancient inspired scripture songs, the Psalms. And the theme of the Lord who hears and delivers so clearly manifested a thousand years before Messiah came, promised. We now have the clearer revelation through the life and the teachings, the death, resurrection, and high priestly ministry of Jesus. May we trust Him completely mm. as our Savior, high priest, and soon coming King. In His holy name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, it's our prayer that as a result of the study today, that you say, Lord, thank you that you hear me. Lord, thank you that you deliver me. Thank you that I can face the future with hope through faith in you. Take that good message and be a blessing to those around you.